Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome home. Are you all excited to be here this morning? If not, pretend like it. I know we've got a little ceremony coming up, and I'll try to keep this quick, but you guys know me, so... Um, I was over there earlier before this started, and I was just praying a little bit. I was like, God, I feel like I'm stuck. Anybody ever just feel like you're stuck? Like you don't know what to do next, or you don't know where to go next, and you just kind of are trying to figure it out as you go? For sure. It's kind of where I was at. I'm like, God, what do I, what do, I do? And God said, I've been putting messages through you. You just haven't been listening because it's been for you. Start listening to what you're preaching. So this is another one of those messages where God's trying to get something to do to me and about the only way he can get it through my thick skull is to say, Hey, Carl, preach this to the church. <laughs> Amen. I don't watch the video. I just put it on a repeat for about two days and maybe I'll get the message. But I'm going to be in Romans 8.28 this morning. <clears throat> And I'm going to start by saying this. Life sucks. Mm -hmm. I wondered how many amens I'd get on that. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain, guys. That's an attitude that we sometimes carry. And when we do, when things begin to happen to us, guess what our mind says? See, I told you so. That stinking thinking right there, guys, and I'm again, I'm preaching myself, that stinking thinking right there will mess us up worse than anything. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's what they say, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how do we get through the tough times? Well, I've got some good news for you today, at least, for me. And that's simply this, that a lot of times the things that we see as life sucking is just growth taking place. It's lessons that are happening to us and if we'll dig into those lessons and we'll dig into those things and if we'll look for the positive in those things, then guess what? Life doesn't suck. We're just growing. Okay, we're being transformed from glory to glory to glory. What does that mean? It means we're just growing. We're becoming it, 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 from a place of just being in utter despair, we grow to a place to where we can function, and then we grow to a place to where not only can we function, but we grow to a place where we can help other people, and ultimately, I think that is what it's all about. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our life is not our own. We've been bought with a the price. There really was, hey, I'm going to get to my scripture and stuff here in just a minute, but there really was a man named Jesus. And he really did love you enough to die on the cross, take a horrible beating, so that your relationship with God could be restored, period. Amen. Amen. That is what the church is about. Amen. When we do the this, and this part right here has been on my heart for two or three weeks, and I said I was going to try to get through this quick, but I just got to share what's on my heart. Guys, the things that we do, like saying the Lord's Prayer and communion and things like that, that's not just an act of the church. And those things are good. But we've got to remember what they're all about. When we take communion, it's not just, okay, she's going to say some words and we're going to cast a little magic something or another and drink the potion and everything's going to be fine and dandy. That's not what that is. What that is is that's remembering Jesus even said it when he was with the disciples. He said, she's already, she's already back there getting ready for me. He said, when you do this, think about me. Remember me. They were taking basically communion. Okay? When we take communion, it's, you know, you hear Pastor Jenny say it all the time. It's not about the elements. It's about the spiritual application of it. That spiritual application is remembering what Jesus did. When we break the bread, that's symbolizing his body being broken and him being beaten. So that we can be healed and that healing is not just for physical healing, but that healing is for mental healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. And then when we drink the cup, it's signifying the blood 
that Jesus shed for us. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no restoration of relationship with spirit. Okay? So, I want to challenge you. When we do these things, when we say the Lord's Prayer, what we're doing is, we're yes, we're saying the same prayer that Jesus prayed, but it's not a magic chant. I dare you to take the time to read that and really get into it. And you'll understand what Jesus was saying. He was saying, I rely on you. Give me what I need so that I can be a conduit for you. So guys, when we do those things, don't just do them as though, oh, that's the next thing on the list in the service. Do it as a spiritual application. Think about what you're doing. Think about the seriousness of what Jesus did. So now I'll get into my message. All right? Thanks for... And this has been a PSA from Pastor Carl. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love God. What's that second part of that say? Read it with me. To those who are called according to His purpose. What's God's purpose? What's God's purpose with us? we got to start there before we go anywhere else. What's God's purpose with us? Love. That's it. It's a one word answer. Love. Jesus was asked what's the most important commandment. What did Jesus say? Love God, love others. Then he said on this, hang all the laws and the prophets. We worry about so many rules and regulations. What's right? What's wrong? What's this? What's that? What can we say? What can we not say? What can we do? What can we not do? What's going to send us to hell? What's going to let us go to I mean, there's so many things that depending on which denomination you're in, you have to do all of these things. And Jesus made it simple. He said, love God, love others. Period. So if our job is to love, and we're doing our best to love the world, then guess what? That second part of that scripture applies to us, to those who are the called according to his purpose. We're called to love. So if the first, if the second part of that is correct because we are called according to his purpose and we're called to love and we're doing our best to love, then guess what? That also means the first part of that scripture applies to us too. Yep. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Now let me ask you a question. We can be honest in here because, you know, this is our church. This is what we do. How many of you feel like that all things are working together for good for you right now? No, that's a tough one. I don't feel like things are working. Okay, so things don't always work together for good. Okay? Well, things always work together for good, but things don't seem like they work together for good. Sometimes. But we're looking at it the wrong way. Okay, let me show you a couple things here. Number one, growth hurts. Growth is not fun. Remember when you were a kid and you started in with those growth spurts and everything started hurting? Everything kept getting worse and everything kept getting just, you couldn't concentrate. Things hurt. Didn't know why things hurt. Mom said, oh, you're going through growing pains. I don't really remember that, honestly, but I've been told I was going through growing pains. I used to be a medical assistant when I first got out of the Army. I was a medic in the Army, and so I went and I was a medical assistant. And one day I had to give a kid a shot, and when I say kid, I'm talking like baby. And a little bit older than baby because the, the kid knew what was coming. The kid knew it was fixing to get a shot, and it was screaming, and it was crying, and I looked over, and the mom's crying. And I'm like, you want me to do this, right? Because everybody in the room is just bawling. Like, I'm almost in tears because I'm an emotional guy. Anyway, everybody's bawling. She said, yeah. She said, I know that what's in that shot's going to help him get better. I think that's God sometimes. I think sometimes God sits on the sideline and goes, oh, man, I can see the pain you're going through. I'm here for you. I can be your peace. I can be your strength. But I know what's in that situation is better off for you. You're going to learn from it. You're going to grow from it. So I've got to allow it to. I've got to allow it to happen. How do we get through the hurts? How do we get through the growth? Well, first of all, we got to trust. 
We've got to trust scriptures like this where it says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this right here. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That scripture right there, and people will say, oh, that, that wasn't meant for us. That was meant for, well, no, I think it was meant for us. I think God wants good things for us. But I think sometimes God has to allow us to go through some junk to get there, right? Father, all distractions, I just speak peace over this place in the name of Jesus. Let your peace settle in this place, Father. So we've got to learn to trust scriptures like that. We've got to learn to trust what the word of God says. We've got to learn to know that during those times when it feels like our world's falling apart and it feels like we're in the middle of that growth spurt, we've got to get to a place where we trust that God has got better plans for us and he's going to use what we're going through to help us get to that place. That's hard for me to understand right now. Because honestly, if I just look at my circumstances and I don't have any faith and I don't have any hope and I don't have any trust, it looks like my world has come to an end. But it hasn't. I'm just rebooting. I've, I've just been, I've just been, you know, I've ran my updates. Now my computer's rebooting, so my updates can do what they're supposed to do. If you know anything about computers, amen. That's what it feels like right now. I'm just like, okay, anytime now, I'm ready for those updates to kick in. We have to look to grow through everything that happens, good, or, good or bad. Because if you're not looking for growth and you're not looking for the good in what seems to be a bad situation, it really feels like life is out to get you. Has anybody ever just had that feeling? I have cried myself to sleep thinking, my Lord, what have I done to tick off God? Mm -hmm. What have I done to... What have I done to make life just turn on me? Anybody ever have that thought, that feeling? I know that's not of God. I know that's of the enemy. But that thought crosses my mind all the time. What did I do? Start to believe those people that, that say, oh, your life's falling apart because you got sin in your life and you're not close enough to God. Come on. When I'm down, I don't need you to kick me. And I'm getting more and more to a place where people like that who like to kick me when I'm down get deleted off of Facebook. They stop getting phone calls and text messages. <laughs> and eventually they might get the B word, the block, because I'm struggling enough. I don't need that negativity to help me. Are you with me this morning? I promise I'm almost Amen. done here. Amen. Sometimes what we go through is meant to set us free. Now, I have read this, and some of you may disagree with the way that I'm about to present this story, but this is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or as I like to say, Rack, Shack, and Benny. <laughs> now, Daniel chapter 3 has that story. If you want to go back and reference it, I'm just going to tell it. King Nebuchadnezzar had made a decree because he got suckered in by all the people who were feeding him bad advice. And trust me, the advice that people give you be careful what advice you take. I have seen people take the wrong advice, get hooked up with the wrong people, and turn into somebody that they are not. Be careful the people that you surround yourself with. Okay. So sometimes what we go through is meant to set us free. So King Nebuchadnezzar, he makes this decree, hey, I'm going to build this idol. And when all of the music plays, everybody stop what you're doing, bow down to this image and worship it. Everybody was down for that except three guys named Rackshack and Benny. Rackshack and Benny were tomatoes and cucumbers. I'm just it's, in, case you have, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Veggie Tales. It's an awesome story. You need to watch it if you haven't. But as I was reading this one time, I saw something. You know, there's the place where it says did we not cast three men into the fiery furnace? See, basically, they refused to to uh, to worship. And so they were cast in the fiery furnace. That's what the king had decreed, and that's what happened. 
and they heated it up even hotter than it normally was. And all of a sudden they cast these three in there and they're expecting them to be instantly incinerated because the guys that threw them in the pit were instantly incinerated. All of a sudden the king says, wait a minute, didn't we put three guys in the fiery furnace? But there's four people down there now. See, when we're going through the growth, and don't you think that Rackshack and Benny's faith grew because they made us stand and God had their back? Mm -hmm. Man, they were growing. Do you think it was fun getting, making the decision to not bow? Do you think there was some fear there that they were about to get thrown into a, they were about to get burned up? I, I would be afraid. I would be so scared. But when they brought him out of the pit, they weren't bound up anymore. They cast him into the pit with ropes on him. And a lot of people say that, you know, oh, the fourth man was Jesus and the fourth man was there and he set them free and then they walked out. I think it might be a little bit different. Now just hear me out for a second. What if the fire itself burned off the ropes? What if the fourth man was in the fire to be there to comfort them and to encourage them and to give them peace in the midst of their trial? But what if it was the fire itself that burned the ropes off? See, sometimes the things that we're going through is the very thing we need to be free. Mm -hmm. We pray about things a lot of times. We pray, God, give me patience. We pray, God, give me healthy relationships. We pray, God, give me all of these things. And then we expect God, like, like it, it, we're ordering off Timu any day now. It's just going to show up at our doorstep. That's not the way it works. The way it works is when we pray for something, God will say, okay. But if we pray for something and God gives it, we don't learn a lesson that allows us to keep that. Sometimes we have to go through it. Sometimes we have to struggle through it and allow what we're going through to create this atmosphere where I don't want to be in a toxic relationship anymore from this point forward. I don't want to, yes, I, I want patience and God, you put me through some situations where I've had to have patience. Those lessons are there to instill and not just, not just teach us one time, but it's the whole, you give a man a fish and you feed him for a day, you teach a man a fish and you feed him for a lifetime. It's that whole concept right there. Sometimes the things we're going through, we need to get to the bottom of the barrel where we've got nowhere to go but up because being at the bottom of the barrel sucks so bad that it creates in us, we don't want to go back to that. And that's growth. When those toxic relationships that come against us, and I don't know why that's what's sticking in my mind, but that those toxic relationships that we have, when we have those, those will take us to a place where we say, I don't want that anymore. I don't want someone who belittles me. I don't want someone who's always negative. I don't want this. I don't want that. And we get so sick of it that guess what? We, we, we grow from it. And we become better from it. And because we've become better for, for it, we want people who are better to help us grow. Mm -hmm. Last thing, Nehemiah, chapter 1 through chapter 7. I'm going to read all of it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. You can go back and read it if you want to. This is the story of how Nehemiah saw the city in which he was born and which his father still lived and the city had been ransacked by the enemy. The walls were completely gone. There was nothing left but rubble. The gates were destroyed. The walls were destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar got it on his heart to go rebuild the walls. So he went and he talked to the king. And the king said, go. And he said, okay, I want some letters for the people who are governors in this place. So they know to help. And they know that I have your permission and this, that, and the other. And he gets there and he sees the rubble. And... He begins to make a plan. And that plan.
plan was to rebuild the walls and rebuild the gates and he assigned each gate to a different family. He assigned each portion of the wall to a different family. But guess what they built that wall back up with? They built that wall with the rubble that had been torn down from the previous wall. They just took the rocks and they rebuilt the wall with what had been destroyed, what had been knocked down. That's pretty cool to me because what that shows me is simply this. God can take our broken past, put it back together, and make it stronger than ever. Amen. One of the most valuable pieces of, I don't want to call it pottery. What's another word for like Chinese bowls and stuff? Porcelain. Porcelain, yes. Porcelain. When, it, when a porcelain dish breaks, and, and sometimes they'll do it on purpose. When a porcelain dish breaks... In the Chinese culture, they will take that and they will take some gold and they will put it back together with gold. And that bowl is stronger and more valuable than it ever was. What seemed to be an accident when that bowl got dropped into, you know, 50, 60 pieces, they put it back together is more beautiful than it ever was. It's still the pieces of the broken bowl. It's still the pieces of the broken vase. But it's stronger than ever. It's more beautiful than ever. It's more valuable than ever. Understand this. God wants to use your rubble to rebuild your life and make it stronger and more beautiful and more valuable than ever. I need you to hear what I'm about to say. I need you to hear this. I need to listen to this. I need to take this to heart. Because the rubble of your past is not where you live. You can't just live in the rubble. Rubble's depressing. You have got to get to a place where you allow God to take those pieces, put them back together, make you stronger than ever. Get you to a place where not only are you strong, where in your mind you feel like you're valuable. I bind every spirit that would call you unworthy in the name of Jesus. Every person in this room is worthy because of what Jesus did. It's not because of what you did. Listen to what I'm saying. He made him who knew no sin to become sin that you and I might be called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You're worthy. Not because of what you do. Because listen. If God can't use junk, then I'm in the wrong business because I got a lot of issues. I got a lot of issues. And if God can use me, I promise you he can use you. But God wants to use your past. He doesn't want you to dwell there. He doesn't want you to glorify your past, but he does want you to acknowledge it. Because somebody in your future needs what you're going through right now. I say that about every time I preach. That's like my heart. Right now, I feel like what I'm going through, I have to get every ounce of everything I can out of it because somebody in my future is going to know the hopelessness and going to know the stalled feeling and this, that, and the other. And something I've been through may be able to just offer them a word of encouragement, a word of hope that's just enough to get them past. So, yeah, life can suck. But life can also be good because life is what we make it. The battlefield is in the mind. And I got to be honest, I lose the battle more than I win it. I really do. I'm not proud of that fact, but my mind plays tricks on me a lot. My mind will make me think things that are not true. We have got to get to a point where we believe this right here. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. What's his purpose? Love. Go love somebody, and then the first part of that scripture applies to you too. All things work together for good to them that love God. Find the lesson. Hang on to the lesson. Because your life, guys, is, it is not just about you. Your life is about the world out there. And yes... We may be an LGBTQIA plus church affirming. But have no doubts, this 
church is about loving the world, gay or straight. We're here to love people, regardless of how people have treated you and treated us in the past. You know what it feels like to be hurt. So go do the opposite of hurt. Go love somebody. Amen. 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 Love you guys.